My name's Sebastian Till, I'm a film director and I run an organisation called It's Upshot. I'm sorry madam, your glasses aren't ready yet, but as soon as they're available, I'll get someone to give you a call back. Well, when's that? I need them today. Yeah, four, four mate, four. Charm, man, you pay for three, man. I'll pay for four, man. You're trying to take me for an Egypt, bro? Now, as you are aware, you are charged with possession with intent to supply. Would you like me to explain the details of the law and what you're saying? Ask the shit more clearly, is this life? Darling, tell me, is this right? Because if it is, I'll be the first one to bring us else. Illegal activity was inspired by a quote that one of my friends used to say. His name's Imatepa Yorte, and he always used to say, if reading was illegal, man then would. So the meaning if reading was illegal, then people would read more. Um, so that's something he always used to say, and this was back in 2008. And from that, that I think that quote just kind of went through in my head, in my head, in my head, and um, to this point where, you know, in 2012, I kind of had this concept and idea, idea of using that quote to make a little advert. Um, after that, I, I pitched, like, a two minute advert to um, a guy called Najan Ward who runs Kingdom Entertainment and through that just talking to him about the concept about the small advert idea he you know him and his team wanted to kind of support me and and take it on as a project but what they wanted to do is make sure that this was the first time this was a time where I could just solely focus on directing mainly so um, legal activity the reason why it's probably one of my most memorable projects is because it was the first time that I actually um, directed something and solely directed. I also edited the film, but I mean, in terms of running around producing and writing and doing all of those, doing loads of different things, um, holding lights or just every, from doing everything to just being able to direct, um, it, was, it was a fun project. Now, as you are aware, you are charged with possession with intent to supply. Would you like me to explain the details of the law and the evidence against you? Okay, the prosecution is saying... I told you, you I found a bag before school. I was going to take it to the police station, but then I got stopped. Hey, see, that doesn't make any sense because the police stopped you at 8pm, which means you would have had the bag for over 12 hours to call into the police station. There's no evidence of you trying to contact the police. Look. I know it doesn't seem that way, but I'm on your side. The process with illegal activity was, I kind of, I came up with a concept, which was based on reading being illegal um, and, and using a kind of spin. So using, showing it as drug dealing and then kind of spinning it and showing it that it was about books. And then what I, what, what I done is I went to Najan and Dwayne Palmer as well, who wrote it with Najan. Um, and I went with them with different scenes. So I went with them with scene ideas. I was like, there needs to be a chasing scene. There needs to be a scene where we play on this. There needs to be a scene like this, like this, like this. And I'll come up with um, some notes. And then from that, they developed a script. Um, we went back and forth with amendments. And yeah, that was pretty much the process. After that, the casting process, we had, we had a casting, we put it online. We, first, we secured a lot of cameo roles, so um, such as like Shiesty, Sway, um, my sister, um, Frida Till, um, Jerome Holder, who was in Shank. So we, we secured a lot of the cameo roles and the known names, and then we put it out to the world and left it as an open casting where we had a lot of other people and up-and-coming actors involved as well. So this is where all our money has been going. And who else knows about this? Yes, so shit on. I'll keep passing kid here. Yasmin, just leave it. Why don't you go back home for a while and clear your head? I ain't going nowhere. After Illegal Activity was filmed, we 
edited the trailer, put the trailer out. When we put it out, because of because the film was meant to mislead people, it done that job. You know, we put it out, and a lot of people, I wouldn't say fans, but a lot of people that support me um, were were saying things like, "Oh, why are you doing a film like this?" and so on and so forth. And it was quite interesting because that the film wasn't about um, drug dealing and stuff like that. It was, a, it was actually about books. So it was quite interesting to see all of these different views. It was on blogs such as Spiff TV where, where, where they had an interesting title saying new film about sex, drugs, violence. And it was just, it was just fun like to see all the hype build up and we just had to be quiet and, and, and just watch um, everyone kind of share this new trailer of a hood film. And then... Um, after that hype, we released the trailer. Uh, no, no, after, after that hype, we released the poster and the website page. So on that page, we had some behind the scenes stuff. We had the trailer um, and then we done screenings. So we done a screening at BAFTA. Um, that was the, the big, like, um, the big premiere in a sense. We had a private screening before that at Warner Brothers. Um, and then we had our last screening at Google headquarters and then after that we released it online So once we released it online, it was just a thing about it going viral and and being on YouTube really We can't help you unless you help yourself. I Don't need help Sarah, please. Can't you see what you're doing to mom? Don't try and guilt trip me. You're not all fucked anyway. You cheap! Take it easy. Go off me, man. Go easy. For me, I feel it's important, personally, as a director, to be responsible for what type of um, content I produce. And um, I don't think it's the same for everybody else and other directors, because you may have different aims as a director or different aims as a filmmaker, um, and you just want to make things for inter entertainment. But for me, I think entertainment's a powerful tool and it should be used in a way that um, you know you're you're at least aware of what you're creating. And um, for me, I always try and balance things out and have a balanced story or have something in there that that people can take away, even if it's small. So even if I'm doing a, a just a fun film that's just full of comedy, there'll be little elements in projects that I do that um, people can take away from. My advice to aspiring filmmakers and emerging um, talent is probably to use, you know, to create your own outlet and to try and get yourself out there by yourself because no one's going to just hand you opportunities. And um, right now we're in a good time where YouTube is, is, can be used as a platform to showcase your work you can build your own following, you can practice things, you can make show reels and you can get jobs, you can do things for free for people that help your career later. I would say it's just to be proactive and just do stuff and, um, and try and open your own doors. One of the biggest things that differentiates me from a lot of other filmmakers um, could probably, I think there's quite a, f quite a few different things. One, I never went to film school so I never went the traditional route of learning film in school and I was never really interested in becoming a director or filmmaker till now so a lot of the things I do are experimenting or off instinct and I think that brings something fresh to the table and I, and I learn as I go as I go along um, so I make mistakes and sometimes these mistakes are good mistakes because you you kind of bring out something fresh from that. And then I would also say my, I would like to think that my direction in regards to the subjects I choose to talk about or how I choose to put spins on things is another thing that might differentiate me from other, from other directors and filmmakers because they might not have, I don't think they have the same types of aims within film and entertainment as me. And a lot of the things I do are very social based, so. When I was younger, buffing was a diss. And bad boys used to bunk off to smoke spliffs or sell it. And they got respect or feared from acting ignorant. Are you trying to take me for an Egypt, brother? 
I'm trying to take me for some dickhead, brother. They got the attention and girls are digging them. So the young bucks wanted to be just like them too. Because they were cool. Maybe next time, huh? Yeah, all right, big man. I'll be here. Collaboration to me is very important. Um, I'm learning how important it is now because before I used to be, you know, stuck in a in a box and I used to do things myself. Not because I didn't want to collaborate, but because, you know, um, I didn't want to wait for people or do things on people's deadlines and stuff like that. I just wanted to get things done at, at a speed that I know I can handle. But now, you know, as, as I've grown older, I've learned that, you know, it's good to get people that are brilliant at something you're not. So, so the product can be even, even better. So now I'm trying to collaborate with as many different people as I can and as many people as I can to, um, to yeah, to get more fresh ideas and to just make the projects better.